Hey folks, welcome back to Combo Class, where today we're going to look at some sort of cursed geometry. In particular, some things that have been discovered about squares. Squares are a very cool shape. I would argue maybe triangles and circles are even cooler, and we will mention those later in this episode, but squares are certainly one of the most fundamental 2D shapes. They have traits like if you line them up, a bunch of mini squares of the same size side by side, you can create a whole infinite tessellation of a plane, like a grid. And if you look at any smaller square within that grid, it fits a square number of your original mini squares. Like to fit 16 squares here, I could take a four by four square and that would contain 16 of the little ones perfectly. And for some reasons like that, squares seem very fundamental and like they would follow all the rules in a somewhat predictable way, but not always. Let's say we were asking a similar question of how many mini squares of the same size we could pack next to each other without overlapping so that they all fit within some bigger square and we were trying to minimize the size of that bigger square and consider a packing to be more efficient if we could fit some amount of the mini squares within a smaller side length of larger square but we didn't force ourselves to stay on a grid and we weren't just looking at square number amounts of squares. Like if I had five of these squares, I could fit them in less space than this, but what's the minimum amount of space I could fit them in? Well, at first, the pattern might seem pretty trivial because one square fits inside another of the same side length. Let's say the side length of these we'll call S, and this S by S fits in another S by S. And if we wanted to fit four squares together, like you'd imagine on a grid, it would take a square of side length 2S for all of those to fit perfectly. If I had cut these squares perfectly, there would be no gaps and it would fill every possible part of space within that bigger square. So there's no possible way we could have had a smaller side length that contained them all unless they overlapped. And similarly, it is true that to fit nine of them, we need a square with side length 3S to fit all three by three of those perfectly. And it's even been proven that many of the in-between cases do require the larger amount of space. Like with two squares, it does still require a bigger square of side length twice the original to fit them, no matter how I slide them along each other. And same with three squares or four, we'll all take that 2S by 2S. And backtracking from the 3S by 3S a bit, it is also proven that eight squares can't be fit in less than a 3S by 3S, nor can seven or six, but something a little different happens at five. With five squares, I have enough room that I could arrange four of them with a bit of a gap between them and tuck the other one right inside that gap so it's just barely touching them. And this formation could fit in a smaller square than a 3S by 3S. It turns out to fit in about 2.7 by 2.7, or to be precise, the square we can fit these in is two plus square root of two over two 
We will see the number square root of two show up in a few places in this episode because it's a very fundamental number that we can observe very easily within squares. Almost like a flipped version of how the number pi arises in circular things like the amount around a circle divided by the amount across it. Well, the square root of two is exactly how many times longer any square's diagonal is compared to one of its sides. So out of all the amounts of mini squares we could be trying to fit from one through nine, five has the unique trait of if we shift one of the squares, rotate it a bit, and pack them differently than a grid, then we can do it more efficiently than the pattern we might expect. And we can do them in this exact amount, the side length of the new square being two plus half of square root two times as big as any of those mini side lengths. And this has even been proven as the minimum possible bigger square that could fit five smaller non-overlapping ones. But it's far from the weirdest configuration we'll see in this episode. This one at least is pretty elegant and has some symmetry even to it where this middle one is shifted at exactly a 45 degree angle compared to these other ones. And these touch exactly at the midpoints of it. But some of the other configurations we'll see when we we get to more squares seem to have more and more of them that are ridiculously weird and even kind of cursed looking. Now once we get to larger amounts of squares things get weirder and weirder. So I'm not even going to be able to show all of the configurations using these little paper squares I cut out myself because we would need an intense amount of precision. Some of these configurations have these weird little glitch-like gaps that are so minuscule, I don't think I could do them correctly by hand. So for the rest of this episode, I'll also be showing some digital images from a website that's dedicated to this sort of problem. So now let's move from my little paper squares to some digital visual representations of these with help from this website. And first let's go through what we've seen so far. One square can fit inside its own size, but two, three, or four squares will take a square of twice the side length of the original ones. Then at five, we can maximize things by tilting one of the squares 45 degrees and packing them in a more creative way. Although at six, seven, eight, and nine squares, it does take a square of three times the original side length. So what happens with 10 squares? Well, here are two different configurations that both can fit 10 squares into a bigger square with side length three plus half of the square root of two times as much as the little squares. But similar to what we saw with five squares, these do still have some sort of elegant symmetry to them where the shifted ones are 45 degrees tilted from normal. And when we get to 11 squares, things start to get pretty weird. Now here are two different square packings that fit 11 squares in that either straight or 45 degree tilted sort of nice looking way which were discovered in 1979 but more efficient ones were discovered as well like Here's another way to do it that looks a little weirder, that has a smaller, bigger square it can fit into. Not only are some of these squares tilted at weird angles and packed in such an unpredictable configuration, but one of them has to tuck its little tip inside two other ones in such a precise little way. 
and we'll continue to see a similar thing as we go up in squares where certain amounts of them that are a bit below a square number amount will take that square number's square to fit them. But now that the square numbers are getting further and further apart, there are more places for anomalies to land and for certain amounts of squares to fit together in weird ways that are very unpredictable and almost look cursed if you consider these as possibly the ideal way to pack one of the most precise seeming shapes. What about 17 squares? What's the most concise way we could pack those? Well, here's one configuration that was found that looks pretty nice and symmetrical. But then this is another configuration that was found that looks somewhat neat, but a little weirder. And now here is another configuration that was found later that is more efficient. And many of these weird configurations from this point forward have not been proven as the minimal size. We could fit the squares, but they're sort of like a world record where currently they are the best known way of doing it. And in the future, maybe we'll prove that this is the ideal way of packing 17 squares, which is just so weird in a natural sense that a shape as regular as the square would have something like this emerge from it as an ideal way of packing it. Or we could find another square packing that's even more efficient than this, but it would probably be at least as weird as this because a lot of the more simple configurations have already been tested. Similarly, here are some evolutions of what's been discovered over time for 18 squares and for 19 squares. As we get to larger amounts of squares, there's less data you can find, and there are some configurations that do follow that predictable pattern of needing the next square number's amount of size, but there are a lot that have been discovered, not proven, but currently the world record for a certain amount of squares that just start looking weirder and weirder. So let me take you down a little rabbit hole of some of the weirdest looking numbers discovered so far. Now around five squared, where we could obviously fit 25 squares perfectly in a 5S by 5S square, 23 and 24 leading up to that do require that same amount of size but 26 we can pack in in less than six squared. It's one of those more anomalous ones like this, still looks kind of neat. And then 27, the best known configurations like that. And 28 and 29. Look at all those weird cracks and crevices that look so irregular for 29, but might be the most efficient way of packing a certain amount of squares. And similarly, if we look at right under six squared at 35 squares, it does take a 6S by 6S to fit them. But then we start getting weirder configurations again when we're a little over six squared. Like these are the best known ways to pack 37, 38, 39, 40, and 41 squares. Or what about this stretch a little above seven squared? These are the best known ways to pack 50, 51, 52, 53, 54, or 55 squares. Like this 55 one here, if you looked at it from afar, it might look kind of regular, but when you look closer, there's all these weird minuscule gaps that make it work. And these are the best known configurations for some numbers right above eight squared. And here are some right above nine squared. Now there's not as much research on amounts of squares, more than 100 of them, but I could find the current best known way to pack 
272 squares. Now, if you ask this question about squares inside of squares, you might wonder some other questions about other shapes. Now, if we look at triangles in triangles, we'll find that the times where they perfectly fit in a larger triangle are actually the square numbers again. When we have one triangle, four, nine, 16 triangles, etc., they fit perfectly. Triangles and squares are more connected than some people realize. We also have the trait where numbers that are slightly under a square number often require that full square number amount of side length. Like here are two triangles or three triangles requiring as big of an outer triangle as four does. And similar to the squares, when we get to five triangles, it gets a little weirder. Like this has been proven as an optimal way of fitting five triangles in a larger one. And here is the best known way to fit six triangles. And here are some other ones that have been discovered that look pretty cool. We could also fit squares inside of triangles like these, which have their own unique patterns and anomalies. Or we could fit triangles inside of squares like some of these, which as usual are chaotically beautiful. Circles are a magnificent shape. And if we introduce them into this concept, we can see some really cool things too. Like here are some of the optimal ways of fitting different amounts of circles in larger circles. And it has its own patterns of different shapes that are created out of these circles, trying to make the space most efficient. And we could combine shapes like putting the circles inside of squares. Here are some optimal ways of fitting circles into a larger square. And we can notice how the circles sometimes like forming sort of like a square grid pattern and other times like forming almost a hexagonal pattern. We could also flip that idea to look at squares inside of circles or things like triangles inside of circles. Don't those look so cool and crazy? Or we could use other shapes, like here are some of the optimal ways of fitting hexagons in hexagons. Now there has also been some research in extending this upward dimension, like what if I folded some of these squares on each other to make cubes? How many little cubes can fit inside bigger cubes is sort of the same question in the third dimension. Now stacking cubes in 3D shapes is a little harder to visualize. Like if my 3D pattern had a hole in it, you'd need some way of zooming in to the 3D structure to see where the gaps and crevices and stuff were. But it is still something that's been studied. It could even be studied in a mathematical sense for higher dimensions, like how to pack 4D hypercubes into larger versions of those. In fact, packing problems of shapes in general are surprisingly linked to many fields of mathematics, contain many cool open questions, and will certainly show up in future episodes again. There are still many open questions related to which shapes can fit into other shapes, so maybe someday we'll uh, return to this topic. Thanks for joining me in combo class. Make sure that you're also tuned into my bonus Demotro channel if you'd like to see my extra content like shorts and live streams. And if you want more info and links, check out the video description. And special thanks to all the people who helped make this show possible, like my Patreon supporters. Thank you all for joining me in combo class today. I'll catch you in the next episode.